my keto journey started prior to January because for the first couple weeks prior to getting on the keto diet, I made a point to do as much research about the diet as I could. That way I could find out you know, the best way to get into it, what to expect during it, um, you know, what are some of the, the common mistakes that people find, uh, and also to see if uh, what I may or may not like about it. A lot of times people just kind of jump into these types of things, they hear it's great from a lot of people and they just they're get right into it without doing the, any prerequisite in, uh, you know, they don't look up any of the stuff. Like they just go into doing it and then they find a week or two weeks later that it doesn't work for them and then they quit and now that's how a lot of things tend to go. So I found that doing a couple weeks of, uh, of Googling basically beforehand to figure out what it is, why you want to do it, how it may help you and how you're going to feel goes a long way. So in that I found, uh, you know, the easiest way to get into it, which I found to be fasting. I have learned a lot about the nuances of healthy fats versus unhealthy fats and, and, uh, and the whole industry is being blurred by that whole debate and, uh, the answer is still very unclear to the entire industry seemingly, but there are definitely some abject bad oils and stuff. Uh, but it was really interesting to find out you know, what to look for as far as good oils and fats and bad oils and fats. So that was very interesting and it's uh, a lot of stuff that I didn't know that I will be taking forward into my diet. All right guys, so it's been hmm, about a week. Uh, now that I've been eating keto after my 48 hour fast into keto. So I'm fairly certain that I am probably into ketosis. But here is where we're gonna find out for certain. So I went online and I purchased a ketone blood tester. So I'm gonna prick my finger, test the blood, and this is gonna tell me what the level of ketones in my bloodstream is. That way I can know for sure if I'm in ketosis, and if so, how far into ketosis I am. So I'm genuinely curious uh, where I'm at, because I have no feel for, for any of this, uh, but it's a lot of stuff uh, and booklets and, and information. So I have to read up a bit and figure out how to use this device, and uh, I will be right back. Okay, I'm back and it turns out that you're supposed to uh, test uh, well fasted. So either in the morning before eating or like two or three hours after eating lunch or dinner. And being I just ate dinner, I'm just gonna test in the morning. So we'll have to wait and see. See you then. How's it going guys? It is January 8th and that means I'm about a quarter of the way through the month of keto. <clears throat> I figured I'd give you guys a brief update on how I'm feeling, how I felt the past few days, and, uh, and maybe a brief update on what my ketone levels are. So uh, the first few days of keto after my fast, which I used to launch myself into keto, I actually felt pretty good. So. Uh, uh, my energy levels were pretty decent. The amount of fat in the diet kept me satiated throughout the day. I found that the meals that I eat are a lot smaller in size. You know, usually I'm like a big plate kind of guy, but this is more of a, uh, you know, those meals that you would get at like a five star fancy restaurant, the gourmet meals, where it's like, you look at it like that's a meal. That's kind of how I'm looking at my meals now. But being it's so filled with fats and uh, fats are super dense in calories, um, it is actually very filling for such a small volume of food. So as far as hunger goes, I'm never really too hungry. So uh, the, the trope of keto being very satiating, that's, uh, that's good to go. Dane approved. Dane confirmed. Uh, but what I am finding is that uh, I'm kind of left wanting to eat more. And I think that's just more of a physical habit than than a uh, physical need. I think it's just more like my body and brain are used to eating for a longer duration and eating more volume of food. So even after I finish a meal, even though I'm full and satiated, 
I found myself wanting to eat more. But that's the diet. Uh, as far as energy levels go, I feel pretty good. Uh, I, I'm surprised that I haven't had any sort of dip in uh, my energy levels except for one day, but I'm pretty sure I just slept poorly the night before. The weightlifting, I can't say how much it's easier or harder than uh, when I'm eating a standard diet because I did actually change up my weightlifting protocol to be a little bit more synergistic with the keto diet. So I can get into uh, exactly my thought process on how, how, how I changed it, what I changed, and why I changed it in a different video, but for this video, for time purposes, I'll just say that uh, still lifting weights still feels pretty good, and uh, I don't feel overall less strong than I would have with carbs. So that being said, uh, feeling pretty good on keto. Feeling pretty good. So I think one of the interesting things about the keto diet is it's gotten me to try some, some foods that I would normally not try. So in my research of how to get enough micronutrients uh, with these high fat foods, I came across several uh, interesting food choices and one of them was sardines being it has a incredible uh, fat profile and it has a fair amount of micronutrients in it so I got some and it's you know typically when you think of sardines in canned fish it's like I don't know that's kind of it's kind of sketch but honestly once you fry it in some <laughs> some oil that's not too bad not too bad. So I made myself today for lunch, I made myself a salad that had some spinach, uh, some asparagus, some sardines, and uh, some walnuts, and then a homemade uh, mayo and mustard dressing. And I gotta say, it is incredible. Uh, one thing for about the keto diet is you are not lacking in the taste department. You know, with the high fat foods and then the ability to use any spices, you can make some of the most incredible tasting foods out there. Uh, definitely beats out like a uh, like a low fat diet as far as taste goes. Yeah, so definitely delicious. Hey guys, so it is the 21st of the month, which means I'm about two thirds of the way done. Three weeks in, and uh, I must say I'm feeling pretty good. I generally have a fairly high level of energy. Uh, I'm rarely hungry. Typically on my typical diet, I would be um, snacking throughout the day and just thinking about food a lot. And I still think about food a lot because it's one of my favorite things, you know. Uh, but now it's, you know, if I realize it's like lunchtime, but I'm like in the middle of something, before it would bother me a lot. I would be like kind of in the back of my head would be like all right come on i want to get to lunch let's go i'm hungry kind of thing but now it's like eh, i'll get there when i get there of course come meal time i'm still hungry but the pressure that my brain is exerting to go eat is is far more subdued so generally i feel pretty good and honestly i'm a little hesitant to exit keto at the end of the month. I'm still gonna leave keto to see how my body reacts to coming back to carbs uh, because first of all, I like eating carbs, it's tasty. Second of all, it's really hard to train in any sort of uh, middle intensity exercise on keto because your blood doesn't, your muscles don't have glycogen. And uh, about, I'm really curious to see how my body feels after going back to carbs. But as for right now, I'm feeling really good. So, coming up this weekend and next weekend is really gonna test my resolve here. So, this weekend I'm traveling down to Virginia to spend the weekend with my sister and my parents are gonna meet us down there. So it's gonna be a nice fa family gathering, um, but of course, traveling while doing some sort of restricted diet like this is tough. Where normally, on my normal healthy eating diet, I eat healthy enough to where if I go away for a weekend, I can afford to just kind of eat whatever and it won't affect me too much. Of course, 
the more junk I eat, the worse I feel generally. And that's just gonna happen no matter when you are eating it. But at least I eat healthy enough normally that, you know, I'm not gonna gain a whole lot of weight, I'm not gonna lose a whole lot of weight. It's not gonna, I don't have to worry about it much. But now on keto, if I eat a whole bunch of carbs, that's gonna boot me right out of ketosis. And then it's gonna be a long slog back in. So it's not, it makes traveling a little bit harder. I'm not typically a fan of restrictive dieting because it's a lot harder to follow. And my prescription for anything health related is to do something that you can be consistent with. And so something that's inherently restrictive is you know, every time gonna be harder to follow. And something like traveling is something that makes keto seemingly difficult. So on this weekend and next weekend while traveling, I'm gonna have to find some ways to still eat keto uh, and still kind of eat and participate with family functions. So that'll be interesting and we'll see how that goes. But otherwise, 21 days in and I'm feeling great. So I'm down here in Virginia visiting my sister and my parents had come down. Say hi guys. Hi. Hi. Now they were nice enough to be accommodating with my restrictive diet for the weekend, mostly being me bringing a bunch of snacks and then them trying to uh, bring some foods that are a little bit uh, more keto friendly. So I really appreciate that. But coming into the house, the first thing that I see on the counter is this. So yes, I come in to see that, of course, there's Krispy Kreme donuts, my favorite, and uh, some cake, uh, which is peanut butter cake, but unfortunately, that's not the kind of uh, uh, peanut butter that I'm on right now. So I'm gonna do my best to avoid those and eat the, uh, the eggs. <laughs> Uh, so in the middle of the month, there was a lot of proposed benefits that I wanted to see if I would see any of those. And some I did and some I didn't. So the start off with the pros. So the hunger levels were surprisingly decreased. Like for the most part during the day, I just wasn't that hungry. Like of course around like meal times, I was like, yeah, stomach gurgle gurgle, let's go eat some food, you know, but it wasn't for the most part I could probably skip a meal and be fine. Whereas before uh, on my typical diet, my hunger is like voracious a lot of the time where it's, you know, I can tell that it's, it's getting to be a certain time because I'm getting so hungry. That's kind of how I felt before the keto diet. Then on the keto diet, it felt a lot more satiated, I suppose. And I think that's due to the high levels of fats. That's kind of what uh, the fats do to you. They have a very high satiation level. Uh, another thing that I found was that um, I never got a like mid-afternoon crash that I typically would get. So whether it's the coffee running out or my blood sugar running low or what have you, maybe I'm just tired from the day. But typically around 2.30 to 3.30 every day consistently, I, I just kind of felt pretty tired. It wasn't anything dramatic. I just, you know, felt like I could probably use a nap. Uh, but on the keto diet, I didn't really experience that. I found myself kind of zooming through to the end of the workday and then questioning whether or not it was the end of the workday or not because I just, it didn't seem physiologically like it was that time of day, but it was. Um, those were the only two huge benefits that I saw. A lot of the other stuff that are proposed benefits, I didn't see a whole lot of in my own experience. Uh, so the increase in mental clarity, the hyper focus state that a lot of people will say that they achieve. Um, I'm thinking that a lot of that is due to people's prior diet versus what they eat on a clean ketogenic diet. 
So a lot like for my for my case, I ate a pretty healthy whole foods based diet beforehand. You know, I'm eating lots and lots of veggies, lean proteins. You know, I I'm very compared to the average consumer, I am very particular about what I put in my body. So going from that to a clean keto diet was just a shift in the metabolic uh, pathways going from glucose to ketones, where I think a lot of people see the mental clarity benefits and the cognition benefits is when they go from the standard American diet, which is loaded with sugar and crap and junk and very low in nutrients, to the keto diet, which is, you know, it's a lot harder to eat that kind of junk and a lot, it's almost hard to not get your nutrients. So I think because of that, people often are like, oh wow, I feel really good. It's like, no crap, you're not pumping your body full of junk. So I, I didn't personally see any increase in my energy levels, focus and mood, but I definitely didn't see any decrease either. So that's my theory on that. Toward the end of the diet, I did find myself longing for some of the foods I used to eat. Um, one, one interesting thing about the keto diet is that I didn't really have any cravings for sweets or uh, high carb meals. There was a lot of times where I, uh, toward the end I was like visiting family or traveling and um, there was, you know, very unhealthy food going around, but it was like celebration. So I mean, I would have normally indulged in that kind of stuff. Um, but like cakes, uh, fondue, treats, whatever. But I really didn't even feel like a, a... Of course I wanted them because of the taste, but I didn't really crave them. Like they were sitting on the table and it was more of a take it or leave it scenario. I didn't really need it. Whereas I think typically it would be like a ha 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 and I'd have to exercise willpower to not eat it. On keto it just seemed like meh. Yeah, I don't need it. There's a lot less straining on the willpower. Going back to what I was saying before, toward the end, I found that I was uh, longing for some of the sweeter foods and uh, carbohydrates. Not particularly sweets, but like uh, fruits. Uh, very much cr uh, longing for fruits and like sweet potatoes and some of the uh, even starchier carbs, to be honest. And it wasn't like a craving, it wasn't like a, man, I feel like I need this. It was like a, hmm, those were nice when I had them, huh? And so, I think with the end of this month, I am going to get off of keto, but I do think I quite enjoyed it for a lot of, you know, I enjoyed a lot of the food and a lot of the uh, subtle things that came with the, di the diet, uh, but it's not, optimal for my my current goals of uh, you know building muscle and performance so I think for a while I'm gonna go back to my normal diet but I'm definitely gonna be interested in cycling on and off of the keto diet from you know a one to three month period and then off for a few months on for a few months just to kind of play around with uh, how cycling the diet. So that's basically my thoughts on the keto diet. I'm gonna check my notes to make sure I didn't forget to say anything. In conclusion, I, I just wanna give some thoughts about whether I think the keto diet uh, is good for you guys. So uh, the diet is very good at burning body fat. That's kind of the whole uh, allure to why a lot of people tend to do the diet is because you, you adapt to burning fat and Therefore, if you're in a calorie deficit, that's the important part, uh, your body's better adapted at burning the body fat that's already stored instead of switching from glucose to the body fat. Um, so that's why a lot of people do it. So if your goal is to burn body fat, it is not a bad idea, but be sure that you're in a calorie deficit or else the scale's not gonna go anywhere, guys. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, that uh, I'm fairly okay with eating the same things over and over and over and over. Um, I, I know that a lot of people, like my dad, said he would get super, super bored of that. And I definitely understand where he's coming from. So, uh, but the keto diet is, I found, since it's so restrictive, it is very repetitive. Unless you can spend just hours and hours in the kitchen every day. 
So if you are not okay with eating the same foods and you don't have enough money to buy one of those crazy priced meal prep services, then I would probably recommend trying a different diet. But if you're okay with eating the same meal over and over because it's you did like one big batch of meal prep, um, then that's then definitely go for it. Uh, the only thing is the uh, the amount of foods that you can eat are so restrictive that it's hard to be more creative in the kitchen. So uh, that's one thing that kind of drew me away from wanting to continue it after this month. That shift in mentality and how I relate to the food was very eye-opening for me. But I think that doing the keto for the short period of time broke that almost. So I think going forward, I'm gonna be able to uh, maintain that relationship where I don't really need that kind of stuff because I know what the feeling feels like to not need it. So I think as a form of reset for your brain and body, I think doing a short-term keto diet, you know, it may, be not, it may not be the worst idea in the world, but who am I to say? Anyway guys, if you found this video interesting or useful or fun, uh, let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Either way guys, I want you guys to stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.